Well, let's start um, easy one again. Any any team news? Can we start on for the for the weekend? Um, no, all the same on that front. I don't think uh, obviously players that have been out a while are, are edging closer. Um, but the boys. We haven't had any fresh injuries, so um, touch wood, we'll be uh, as strong as we was last Saturday. Let's talk about the weekend. What was so different to them to, to a week before against against Mansfield? Oh, good question. Um, I'd like to say it's the week's coaching we've done, but I think there's a number of things that, that all you know. A, you're at home, and uh, you know you always probably got a bit more belief. B, I think Mansfield are in a good place at the moment. They're they're only been beaten once, so that was always going to be a really tough one. Um, and see, you know, we took our chances. I think in the game against Mansfield in the first half, we've had two 1v1s, we've missed them both. Here, you know, we, we probably had four chances all game and, we, and we, took, we certainly took two in open play. So that's, as we all know, the old saying, goals change games. So, uh, so that's one that's, uh, that's probably contributed to the win. How much confidence can you take, not just from the win, but the fact that they let in a goal to make it 2-2? And I think many people might have thought, here we go again, but they came back and, and won the game. That, that will give them so much confidence, won't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and again, like I said, after the game, I tried to address the mental side of the game in the build-up, you know, the what-ifs and get the boys prepared for that. Um, because, you know, I knew that that's something we probably struggled with. And um, like I said, the response was brilliant, even at, at sort of one-one and two-one. And uh, to to go again, and when they've got back to two-two and, and keep going, there was a spell when you just thought there was Tranmere were just starting to edge the game. But that will give the boys belief that they can go to the end. I know managers don't like always singling out players, but John Stead's been missing for a while. He has been a, a massive boost to have back, hasn't he? Of course, um, I think you know. Generally, when you've got it's not just one player. I think when you get Kane back as well. Um, you know, you've got players who know how to score goals at the level. Um, they expect to score. Uh, the rest of the team expects them to score. I think it's hard sometimes for the younger players that have been coming in to, um, you know, who, who aren't so used to, to consistently scoring and finishing chances. I think that's a little bit harder. So both of them have, have added. Then all of a sudden you've got Christian Dennis who's done great and scored some goals lately. All of a sudden now he's pushing to try and get in the team. Now you've got options from the bench. And, you know, if we can eventually get Lewis and Enzio back, then, then all of a sudden everything looks a bit stronger. You talk about being tighter defensively. Do, do you feel that they're, they're responding to those things that you've talked about instilling on the training ground? Um, yes and no. Right. Yes, they're working really hard on it. No, we conceded two goals and two goals from stuff we've been working on. So, lots to do still. There's, it doesn't doesn't just happen overnight and, and what we try and do is it's not just the back four that defend it's it's it starts from the front and that message has gone to the front players and just like all of our patterns of play and the way we attack teams starts from the back if the defenders just aimlessly kick the ball and get it as far away from them as possible we're not going to get many attacks so we, we, we try and put the onus on both ends of the pitch to help the other end in their respective jobs. The win, of course, last weekend, and now a run of games, the festive period, always very busy. But, but if you can get on a roll, does, does the Christmas period come at the right time for you because confidence is high? So do you think that, that could work in your favour if you can keep going? It can. Um, you know, if you get a few games unbeaten in a short space of time, it can, it can give you a massive lift and, and a boost when it's all happening, absolutely. Um, at the moment, you know, it's to be seen whether we're capable of that. You know, who knows? Um, that only the players can can produce that. Um, you know, I've I've looked at a seven-game block, like I said, two of them that Chets was in charge for, and you know, when I presented to Alan, and and we had to hit a certain target to be on on for where we needed to go, and that win on Saturday has massively helped that. You know, and, and we've got uh, I think we've got three games left in that first seven game block and you know we need to get a certain amount of points so if we can get near it or around it given where we are um, I'll be very happy. Grimsby away a team that you could perhaps pull into the to the relegation battle but it ain't going to be easy for you on Saturday what, what, what are they going to give to cause you problems do you think? Loads um, home form's been good you know they uh, they scored a few goals recently at home they've they've won last week um, you know they they I've watched quite a bit of them and I'm really impressed. The manager's done a great job there and very similar to us in things that we're trying to do as well in the way we play. Good energy, good tempo, centre forwards in, in really good form. So they've got a lot of qualities to, to cause us problems. And like I say, 
it's very, very hard to, to focus solely on the opposition. We need to make sure that we're good at what we do. So that's what I've been trying to do. But we'll, we'll be aware for what they bring. And we're away from home. And, you know, we need to go in there and dig in and do all the stuff that you need to do on a, on a wintry day away from home at, at Grimsby. OK, I'm good, thank you. How much, uh, I mean, obviously after, the, after Saturday's win, what's the mood been like this week? Have you noticed a complete difference in terms of the mood and... It yeah, it's been it's been um, there's been a lot more smiles and faces, which you'd expect. But I've actually gone the other way early in the week, particularly, and, and gone even firmer on them in loads of aspects because I do believe that sometimes you can get complacent after a win. I think the teams at the top, the best teams, they go again. They they set a standard and they don't drop below it. And winning sometimes can make you soft. Um, so so it's important to to try and go hard. So we've been hard on them. Um, hard on them in physically, hard on them mentally, um, almost to just try and instill so many good habits that losing doesn't become a regular occurrence. Um, you know, we can't guarantee that we'll all of a sudden go on winning runs, but we can guarantee that we'll be, or what we can be in control of is that we're a very competitive team that the opposition have to work very hard to get anything from. Mm. Um, uh, great to get your first home win and your first home game in charge. Congratulations. Thank on you. That. How crucial is that home form going to be going forward? Because last year, obviously, Notts had a brilliant home record. This year, it's not been quite so good. Yeah. Well, I don't think Notts have had a good home or away record this year. <laughs> you know, when you've only won four games all seasons, I just think every game, there's an advantage at home. Everyone knows an advantage at home. But I just think you have to pick up points wherever. And um, the home form is going to be very, very important. But we can't put total pressure on, on that. You know, we've got targets. We're going to have as many away games as we have home. And every game's an opportunity to pick up one or three points. And we've got to find ways away from home to be resilient and find ways at home to to be to be strong and intimidating. And then it's not easy when you're not used to winning. So yeah. it's not going to happen overnight. Um, but, you know, like I say, Saturday was a start. Loads to work on by all stretch of imagination. Um, but we're, we're working hard on it. Um, I've got to ask you, you'll probably get asked this question numerous times coming up to the January transfer window. Have you given it any thought um, and what's the latest? Absolutely. Um, loads of thought. Um, already set you know, uh, certain benchmarks for, for Coxie and Chets to start looking at um, in, in key positions. I've got my one's positions I'm looking for. We bring them together, we present to each other, we're trying to find out the best type character, what we need, the profile in the player we think. The squad needs and then trying to get it um, not easy I can assure you um, and obviously financially you know the club's thrown a lot of money into this season and hasn't got loads more to throw in so we need to manage that with ins and outs we can't carry 30 plus players so loads of difficult conversations with certain players to you know let them know where they stand and and, and try and do right by then I don't don't treat people poorly it's not my way um, we work with them to try and you know, get them what they need at the same time whilst, uh, you know, obviously looking after the club. So loads to do on that. That started today. We're having a Christmas lunch and then afterwards I'll be uh, back in the office with Coxie and we'll be going for a load more. Um, what type of player would you like to bring into the club? In? What, what are the key mm. attributes that you look for? Quick, strong, good on the ball, technically brilliant, right foot, left foot, scores goals, defends, up and down the pitch. Um, I have a quality, is there any big, good in the air, good at set pieces. Um, different players, different positions. You look at what you've got at the club, you look at the way you like to try and play, the way I want my teams to play, and then you try and build what you might not have. You know, you, you might have... You know, you might not have good talkers, so you might want to try and sign a talker. Not always easy, but you know, and so on and so forth. You might need, uh, you know, somebody who puts their foot in in midfield. I'm not saying that's what we do, but you just profile what you think the squad's missing, and then try and set about profiling that player and seeing if you can add it to the squad because you don't want to bring in the same if you can help it. So, so that's what we're working on. But um, you know, obviously, financials and ins yeah. and outs and all that kind of stuff. It it can get. It's going to be. A lot of my time over the next four weeks, I would say, is going to be um, probably away from the training field at times really? to, to try and get our business done and, and come out the end of January in a place where we feel we're a lot stronger. Does it make it more difficult? With the, I mean, have you got to let players go to bring them in? Is that Something along them lines, yeah, that's where we are. You know, Whatever we do at the moment needs to try and be cost neutral. And... There's no hard feelings about that, you know. This club's 
thrown good money into trying to be successful this season and it hasn't quite worked and that's football it yeah. <laughs> happens up and down the country Man United with all big clubs and it, it, it's you know we've just got to address where we are now and, and make sure that we do the right thing by the club mm. and what, what, what's that been like coming into it I mean I know you'd have known about the numbers mm. but what's it been like having a squad of over 35 players to make? yeah that, one, that one's been a bit difficult because you know Wimbledon I used to run with a sort of 22 man squad and and keep it quiet in house, and then you know if you had injuries, that's where the twenty ones got their their game time or, or pushed. So that bit's been a bit more difficult. But we've had a lot of injuries, and they're slowly filtering back. But we've got good staff. Um, I think if you're planned and you structure, you plan ahead, everything can be can be done the right way. It's when you turn up without knowing what you're doing the next day that you can have problems. But we're you know we're already we've planned all the way till two weeks into January. Um, and we've already planned the detail for next week, so we're we're well ahead of the game. Um, just got to ask you about NCO. Is there any any more update on him and, and, and Louis? Um, I think you know we had a meeting this morning. I think um, uh, Louis probably going to be three weeks. I would have thought before he's back into training. Um, so so he's edging ever closer. Enzio um, could be anything from getting back in and around training from the very very end of january start of february to mid february um but you know with the type of injury he's had you you just have to yeah. play it by ear but but um you know it will will push them to get them back soon but in the same vein making sure we don't break them down again Come on, thank you very much sort of your way into your um, I said this before, you know, it's great, great win for them. Um, there's some boys in there that have been in there around the first team squad. Um, and I say this to all the players, so I'm not talking out of turn. I tell them, great, 23s, I want to hear they're playing well. That's the start point. They're playing well regularly at 23s level. It's hard to know sometimes whether they're playing against a young 23 squad against them, so they might be better than that team, or whether they're playing against some experienced players. You learn more when they're playing against a strong team. Um, but for me, as far as getting in the first team, how they train when they're in and around the first team is a massive point. You know, I've played 17-year-old centre halves in the first team at Wimbledon because I watched them every day for two months. Mark Akinfenwa, Lyle Taylor, Tom Elliott and Mark and Well. And that tells me that they're up to the level, not necessarily if they're up against an under-18 player on a Tuesday. So it's you've got to play well. That's a start point in the 23s. But you'll get into the team on how you are every day in and around the first team at training. And then looking ahead, it's obviously the festive period now. How do you enjoy that as a manager? Well, with great difficulty. Um, I will be seeing my wife and children and family Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. And that will be the last time I see them until January. So... Um, it's the life of a football manager. As far as the players go, you know, they'll get they'll get Christmas Day off. I don't believe I believe I can get all my work done Christmas Eve and on the Sunday and on the morning of Boxing Day. I don't need to bring them in to do a few set pieces next to nothing. It's, it's counterproductive, um, and we'll be ready to go Boxing Day. I'll make sure of that. Um, and then they're in nearly every day because the games come thick and fast. You have to recover. It's hard to give time off, so it's difficult. But I think if you, one of the things I believe, and if you can cre create an environment at work where actually people will look forward to coming into work, it's hard, it's intense. The manager's on you, but it's fun, and it's you don't feel intimidated by it. You look forward to it, and there's a bit of a bond with your teammates. It just makes the the sacrifices that little bit easier.